Hey, Stola Hansen here. Today I'm going to talk about the Surface Duo. I really love how Teams performs on this device. Check this out, how Meetings works. You can have video on one screen and content on the second screen. If no content is being shared, you will get four video screens, three of the participants and yourself. The reason why you see only two videos when you also have content there, it is because Microsoft has just stretched out the screen and taken that one presenter video you get uh, from the regular Teams mobile device. I also got asked how does meeting broadcast perform on this device and it's the same on any other device except you can multitask. Let me show you. So here I have the Surface Duo and I have created a group for Teams and To Do because I'm going to use To Do to take notes uh, during videos. So I called it a broadcast. So here you see it opens on two screens. I have to do over here, Teams over here. I can join the meeting. And when I've joined the meeting, I'm able to do multitasking. I can do whatever on this screen. So here I can take notes from a session while I'm listening to the stream. How cool is that? You can even hear it sound in here. So this is a live feed and I can take, hey, this was a good tip. And especially if you are attending a virtual conference or, or of some sort, then you can have the content over here and take notes over here. I take notes in to do because I like uh, to have tasks made out of my notes so that they can process them later. So how does Teams perform on this device? Well, it performs great. Check this out. I can search it over two screens and I can go into Teams. I can go into general here and it goes on the other screen. Apparently I have birthday today, so uh, I got some flowers and all that. But here I can scroll through um, the other um, teams and channels and you will get the content over here. And here I'm going to write a reply. I'm going to flip it and then I can write. And then when I'm finished writing, posting that, I can move out of the chat. I'm not going to post right now. And then flips back. As you see, there is a slight delay between the flipping, but you need to get used to it. You need to be firm when flipping. So I really like the way I can stay productive, even in, in the Teams app. And I really like this. This is a really great experience for me. And this is my main reason for enjoying the Surface Duo. The second app I want to show you is the Microsoft To Do app for note taking. And this is how I remember stuff. So there are two ways to open the to-do app. It is from Quick Launch, where I can easily create a new task and it gets stored in tasks and also my day. But if I want to work with to-do, I can open tasks, which I created a shortcut for on the screen. You see it opens up on the screen I'm clicking on. So if I go over here and open it there, it will also open up on that screen. And what's great with most Microsoft applications is that they stretch over the screen. You need to hit the center here for it to open. And then it will open on both screens. There I can dive into a task while I still have navigation over here. And this is why I love the Surface Duo. And of course, if I'm going to write on this, I need to go into uh, the add step and then add the task. Cool, right? So this is how I use the to-do. How does the pen work with OneNote? So let's see. Opening up OneNote here. Also, I really like the position of the fingerprint reader. It's really great. I don't even, even need to push the power button to open it. It's well placed. I think it's well responsive and it's quick. Love it. Opening, opening up OneNote here. Of course, I can stretch it over two screens and I can start taking notes. You see here, I've been practicing here a bit. So I can easily take notes. It's good to write on. It's responsive. You see that? It's quite responsive. And it just works. I haven't paired this device uh, or pen to the duo. It, sh it just worked. And then I can change colors and all that. Cool. I got a question also, 
how is the handwriting to text recognition work on this device? It doesn't. That's not a feature on the OneNote app on Android because the Duo runs Android and that's just not a feature. So what you do, you take handnotes and then you sync it up to your computer. That is where you can convert it to text if you want to. What else do I like with the Surface Duo? Well, I want to show you a couple of things. First, I unlock it. Then I clear out the apps. And as you see, you need to get used to the gestures. I've seen some reviewers they say, oh, it doesn't work with, with gestures because I can do whatever I want. No, you can't do whatever you want. You need to learn it. You need to get to know it, how it works. So I installed the Samsung browser on this device actually. And the reason for that is dark mode. That's the only browser I found that actually has dark mode on browsing. Why do you want to use dark mode? Two reasons. It's good to look at, even uh, if you are in a dark room, which I may find myself in. And the other thing is that it saves battery. So that's why you want to use dark mode as many places as possible. So um, other stuff I like on, on the Duo is I have a uh, dual screen launch. So here are some use cases. I showed you one earlier with the Teams and To Do. I have YouTube and YouTube Analytics to check my videos, to see what's going on here. Also to see the stats from my videos. Really cool. Also, I am a social media enthusiast. So I have LinkedIn and Twitter both on uh, each screen where I can look at um, social media, uh, what's happening there as well. And also make sure that you're not holding it upside down because that doesn't work well. So just make sure that you follow the uh, blitz here and make sure that you uh, flip it the correct way. What else do I like? Well, let's. I also like the widget here you have where I have my uh, calendar, I have email, I can choose the widgets, widgets I want. And I have some other meetings here as well. You can, you can populate this the way you want to, but this is how I actually stay on top of calendar events and emails. What else can I show you? Well, I think this is the first mobile phone where I want to deep read blog articles because I can stretch it over two screens. And yes, there is a line in the middle here, so I will read either above or below, but this looks readable. And I don't like reading on the mobile phone. I, that's why I just save it for later. But this is where I can actually find myself deep reading content. So that's a really great use case for this device. So what have I been struggling with with this device? Well, there are two things. One is you need to plan. You need to plan if, am I, is there a potential that they're gonna use this as a one-handed device? Because then you should flip it and, and leave it like this. And uh, because then you see that you are able to use the screen you want, uh, you can flip it like that. Um, and it's really easy to start chatting and, and use the one-handed side of things. You see the keyboard here is slightly tilted so that it's easy to maneuver with one hand. So leave it like this if you want to just handle it with one hand. It's super easy to um, lock um, up and uh, it's easy to use. Second thing I was struggling with is in the gym. Yes, this is my only phone by the way. So in the gym I need to bring this, but this is too nice a device for me to just leave around in the gym. So that's where I actually got something here that helped me. My old mini disc sleeve. It fits perfectly in there and hopefully there will be become some cool sleeves out there. But this, yeah, I can take this with me in my gym now. I can leave it there because I listen to headsets. And when I work out and, and when I, I talk in the phone as well uh, using this device. So having, having something to put the device in is recommended. So how is it to make a call on this device? Well, actually it's better than you would expect. So I have the calling app here. I can call and the, you see it goes dark when I put it to my ear. Actually, it feels quite good. I've seen people like bashing about this, but what's wrong with this? And the audio is really great. You can hear it here. 
and um, I, I felt great. I uh, also uh, asked how do I sound on device and they said I sounded great. And yeah, people have had large phones before, so this is not something new. This is the old Nokia 920. And yeah, you can see that it is not bad, right? It's not that big or smaller. This was also a big device, so nothing, nothing new there. And yeah, you, but you should plan for it uh, so that it is easy to answer the call here. What do I think about the hardware? I love it. And this is a problem for me because I like to just open it and, and see what's going on. It it's opens like a book and I almost feel like, like um, a Westworld a tablet here, right? A flippable tablet because I can bring it up I can start adjusting things. So where's my hue lights? There's my hue lights. And I can start like configuring stuff on this. I really like it. I've even seen some people hooking up to remote desktops using this, this thing. And uh, yeah, the hardware is well done. This is a great piece of engineering. It feels well, it feels expensive. The hinges, I love them. It's not e easy to open with one hand. So, so don't try that but you need to use two hands, you need to plan for it to be flipped to the correct side. So the hardware is really great. What's the battery life like? Well, I think the battery is still adjusting, but uh, I'm testing it right now and um, it has been, it's been lasting for 40 hours with five hours screen time. But it really depends on how you use the device, of course. Do you use both screens? Do you use um, a lot of multimedia on this? Do you watch Netflix, Disney Plus, all that? Uh, or are you just checking emails and Twitter and LinkedIn and stuff like that? So it really depends on how you're using it, but it's much better. I think it's the best battery life I have had in a phone in a long, long time. And I've been following the um, Samsung Galaxy S series and they typically lasted me till six, seven or eight in the evening and never across uh, a night. So I've been, I didn't charge this, this last night and still it had battery until noon uh, the day after before I wanted to charge it. This device is only available in the US at the moment, but I am based in Europe and it works great with European carriers. It has the ability to have uh, both eSIM and micro sim so you can actually have two sim cards in this one if you have eSIM in your own country and maybe uh, micro sim in the different country you like to travel to if you can do that again i have been challenged to have an honest review about the surface duo and what you need to be aware of is the flipping take some time need to get used to it and i've seen other devices that are slow on this as well but you need to be uh, firm on this. You don't, you should like flip it around and expect it to like know what you want to do with it. You need to be like, now I want this view. Now I want this view. And also make sure you understand the icons here that there are, uh, I, sometimes they're on this side because now I have a widget here. If I have an app open for instance, and I see the apps are open here uh, for, uh, for that. And uh, if you want to switch screen, you do that. If you want to have it span across, you need to make sure it shows on both before letting go. Also, you, there's a difference between a slow wipe up because then you get all the apps that are there. Or if you want, really want to close an app, you need to be fast. So you see there's no home button here or back button. So I recommend that you are getting, get used to how this works. So back is always, this and you need to learn that you can of course go back and have a home button and a back button and so on but uh, i recommend that you keep it like this the native way of doing it and learn how it works also if you want to close all apps for instance then you need to uh, bring up the app and, and keep it there and then you can scroll through and at the bottom you can close out all apps you want to do so make sure that you learn how the device works. As a closing note, do I recommend this device? Yes, definitely. Who do I recommend it to? Not those who want to go out hiking, wanted a water resistant device, 
and need to take really nice pictures because that's not what this device does. This device is for productivity enthusiasts that can see themselves more productive in a mobile setting. So if you want to write longer Teams messages, write longer emails, this is the device for you. It feels great. The hinges are strong. I can easily flip it over on the other side. This is a great piece of engineering. Do I want to use the rubber uh, bands that comes with the device? I don't, I don't think I want to, but you should, because if you drop it, it will drop on those rubber devices. So use that device. So check this device out if you found my review interesting. Also, YouTube thinks you like these videos as well. Thank you.